What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're going to be talking about some of the best quarterback drills that you guys can do that do not require a wide receiver. Let's get started. Alright guys, before we get started with this video, I want to talk to you about a great opportunity we have this offseason for quarterbacks. We are going to be traveling out to 10 different states across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. So if you guys are local to the DMV area, St. Louis, Missouri, Honolulu, Hawaii, Boston, Massachusetts, Cleveland, Ohio, Austin, Texas, um, Newark, New Jersey, Seattle, Washington, Denver, Colorado, or Los Angeles, California, and you would like to train with us, check out that very first link in that description below. We are coming out and hosting camps in all 10 of those cities, so if you guys are local to there, would like to work with myself and my staff of coaches, check out that very first link in that description below. Let's get back to this video. All right, guys, so the first drill that I want to talk about that does not require a quarterback is going to be a drill where you use a towel. So I'm sure all of you guys have probably seen, you know, quarterbacks, quarterback coaches post drills where, you know, guys are throwing with a towel and they're doing all these reps. What does that actually work on? Why do we actually use a towel? And that's what I'm going to tell you today. So this towel is used for something called extension. When you guys flick your wrist on a throw to be able to help you get better spin, better accuracy, how many of you have had a coach tell you that, oh, you just got to flick your wrist more at the target and the throw will be better. Now, that's pretty bad advice because there are a lot of things that tie into that wrist flick or what I call extension. So that comes down to having a disciplined front side. So, so many quarterbacks are flawed because maybe they don't use their hips. Maybe they're very like not as strong with their upper half, I guess you can say, and they have a flawed front side of their motion. So anytime that we throw, your body is split down a midline, kind of like this line down the middle of the field. Pretend there's an imaginary line going down the middle of your body. Whatever your front side does, that pulls the release off of that midline, unless it stays by your face and your shoulders stay parallel to that target. So if I'm throwing here, and let's say I'm throwing to the camera, I don't want to step and then dip my head out because that's going to make my arm widen and I can't get to extension. So guys, when they miss high, they'll get quarterback coaches who will tell them, oh, hey, just flick your wrist. But if you're dipping your head out and you're up here, you can flick your wrist all day long. It's still going to go high because you're falling off the midline. So this drill helps you work on that because you want to be able to keep this front hand by your face like you're eating a sandwich and you want your shoulders to stay level. So your release can stay inside your frame. And also, if you need to, the situation calls for it, you can change up your release in your arm slot with just simply moving your hand. That's why you see guys like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, all throwing side arm, but they keep a disciplined front side. That's what people fail to mention. So this drill helps with that. I'm going to stop talking about it. Now, first thing we got, your front foot is going to be slightly open and you're going to keep your front hand awkwardly by your face and you're going to weight is going to be distributed onto your back leg. You're going to be here. Now, the reason why we want to keep my weight back is when your weight is back, your back foot is underneath your right armpit. That allows you to transfer that weight through and get good hip rotation. It's the throwing sequence that matters. So you're going to be here, front foot's open, weight is back, hand awkwardly in front of your face already into a backstroke position whether it's like an L maybe a little higher wherever your backstroke is and all we're gonna do is just pivot and rotate through but we're going to keep my hand in front of my front face almost awkwardly to work on that stability of the front side so we're gonna be here and just rotate through and extend and make sure you hear that snap of the towel because if we don't extend we come out we come across you will not hear the whip of that towel that's why so many quarterback coaches have their guys work on towels now again towel takes pressure off the arm it's all about reps this specific drill you should probably get maybe 25 to 30 reps of this again remember quick recap you're going to have your front foot slightly open weight is going to be back arms are already going to be into your backstroke and we're just going to pivot and rotate through here in that snap of the towel and keeping a disciplined front side. All right, guys, so we're going to stick with the theme of throwing with the towel. I'm going to take you through a great footwork circuit that you guys can use to help you work on your footwork in the pocket and you being able to throw while moving in the pocket. So there's three specific movements that I want to cover. You want to maybe get about 10 reps of this every single time you try to throw. So when we're in the pocket, number one thing, when you're, you want to get rid of all wasted motion in the pocket. So that means that you want to have a good base and your base is always ready to, pre already, already prepared, preloaded to throw and get the ball out of your hands. What so many guys will do is when they move around in the pocket, they get very wide and when a receiver comes open they can't throw like this so they hitch up and that takes extra time so this drill kind of helps you get rid of those bad habits and helps you stay in a good base the entire time now what you want to do is you're going to be loaded in the pocket weights going to be on your back foot because that's where the weight has to be right that weight needs to be back so I could transfer and so I could get that rotation with my shoulders and have that nice torque position that's why you want to have your weight back so on this drill it's important that you keep that weight 
loaded back. So you're going to be here, weights loaded. It's going to be mimicking like we're getting pressure from the outside first. So you're going to step up, then inside pressure from like my right guard, and we're going to step back and throw. Again, I'll show you how it's going to look semi full speed. So we go here, up, back, shoot through and throw. That is all we're doing on this drill. Now, second part of this drill is we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go back, then up. So now we are simulating like we have guard pressure from the left first. So you're going to step back, outside pressure, step up, shoot through. And then the next part of this drill, we're going to simulate like we're getting outside pressure from the right, step up, guard pressure from the right, step forward, and throw. So those three specific drills, and I'm going to show you how it's going to look full speed, is a great footwork circuit to get into before every single workout where you're not throwing to any wide receivers. It helps you work on your base, getting the ball out of your hands, and obviously working on that same extension point. <laughs> All right, guys, so this next drill is one of my favorite drills to work on. You guys hitching up into a throw to help you guys with your deep ball distance, your deep ball accuracy, and honestly, just your accuracy any situation where you have to hitch in the pocket. So how many of you have probably taken a, like a drop? I'm sure probably everybody who's played quarterback has taken a three-step drop and a hitch where they hitch up and then they throw it. They're throwing like a comeback, a dig, a fade, whatever it is. Now, the mistake that quarterbacks will make on that three-step and a hitch, they'll drop back, and usually when it's a three and a hitch, it's probably a longer route, right? Like, let's Let's say it's a 15 back to 12 yard comeback. So you're probably trying to get some depth, right? You're dropping back, taking this three step. You probably got some weight onto your like left leg if you're a righty, right leg if you're a lefty. So you're getting depth. Naturally, you're going to have some weight here on this front foot. Now, remember what I said earlier in this video. Where do you want your weight to be in the throwing motion? You want it back. So the mistake that guys will make, they'll hit the top of their drop like this. They hitch up but they leave all of their weight forward. They never take their weight and shift it back to get them into a good position to be able to drive. So that's what this drill is going to work on. It's going to work on that shift of weight to get you in a good position where your weight is back to where you can transfer that weight, get your hips to rotate through because that's where your power comes from. And when your weight is back, that allows you to rotate back with your shoulders. So when your hips shoot through and your shoulders are back, that's how we get more snap, more torque, and more pop on the ball. They call that dissociation fancy word for separating your upper half and your lower half. Very similar to like a baseball player hitting a baseball. He keeps the bat back and lets the hips bring the bat through. Throw, hitting a baseball and throwing a football are two very similar mechanical movements. So what this drill is going to be, you're going to be here. Weight's going to be on your front foot. You need a line. You don't necessarily need a line, but a line certainly helps. And it's a three-part drill. So you're going to be weight forward. We're going to switch. Weight gets back. Switch. Weight gets back again. Switch, then on the third one, weight gets back, shooting through to throw, working on that hitch. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit faster paced. I'm going to show you how this is going to look full speed, but this is a great drill that does not require any wide receivers, anybody to catch for you that can help with your drop and your footwork at the top of a drop. <sighs> All right, guys, now something that I used to do when I played quarterback that would help me when I didn't have receivers to throw to or, you know, maybe it was like I just wanted to get extra work in after practice, whatever it might be, is I would go through the different plays in my um, playbook and go through the progressions of my feet and do it with the towel to work on just reps and getting us used to having the correct footwork movements. Now, like, let's say, for example, I'm sure everybody in their playbook has like a smash concept, right? So like a smash concept is let's say it's out of doubles, outside wide receivers running a hitch, slot receivers running a corner. So like, let's say it's cover two, for example, what my progression would be is I would drop back, I'd take like a three step or a shuffle drop, I would look at the first read, which would be the hitch, and then I would reset and throw the corner if the corner, like the DB on the outside, lined up over my outside wide receiver, crashed on the hitch, then I would throw the corner. So I would go through that mechanical progression a couple different times, and I would do that for every single pass play that I have in my playbook to get my feet and to get my mind on rhythm and to pretty much just be on the same page as my entire body. Right? So when you go back, let's say, for example, we're mimicking a situation where I read keys to the corner. Let's say the corner backs up. This is how I would treat the first part of it. I would take a three-step drop, one, two, three, and then throw. Then I would come back and I would mimic like the corner sat, and now I'm throwing the corner route. So I would go here, one, two, three, reset, 
and then throw. That is an easy, easy way to work on progressions, to work on your base in the pocket, to work on your feet, your mechanics, everything that's actually going to tie into a live game scenario. So I highly recommend that, fellas. And to get it maybe a little bit more advanced, I used to do this with my eyes closed. So I would kind of envision, like kind of, you know what I mean? Just like kind of see where the different reads were. I would try to envision it and that would help me in a game because it wouldn't be foreign language to me. I wouldn't get out there and be like, oh crap, what's this look? I would think about it. I would think about the different coverage looks, what my feet should be against those coverage looks and that's a great way to get better when you don't have any wide receivers to throw to you got to go through this stuff it's boring it's it's lonely work but you got to love the lonely work especially at this position as a quarterback all right guys i really want to thank you for watching i really appreciate it if you guys have any questions at all don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below we always appreciate the feedback it's always great to hear from you guys and again fellas if you're a qb or a wide receiver and would like to train with us when we are coming to 10 different cities this off season check out that very first link in the description below we'd love to have you out to one of our off-season QB and wide receiver camps. I'll see you guys next time.